Hi everybody, welcome to our live crochet event. I'm Brenda K.B. Anderson and today I get to show you how to make this pineapple water sling. So I love going for hikes. I'm kind of outdoorsy. I like going for walks. But what I don't love is carrying a backpack full of my whole family's collection of water bottles with us. <laughs> so to solve this problem, I've decided to make water sl slings for myself and my kids um, and hoping that I can stop doing that. All right, and I'm so excited about this project because I love making the pineapple stitch, and I've been thinking for a long time that I wanted to do, to do a live um, demonstration of the pineapple stitch, but it is kind of an involved stitch. Don't let that scare you. Um, we're gonna walk through it. Um, so I needed to think of a project where we could kind of breeze through and it wouldn't be too much for a one hour episode, right? So here it is, the pineapple water sling. So as you guys know, this is a live event. So if you wanna say hello, that would be awesome. Um, or if you wanna tell me where you're crocheting from. Another thing that I'm curious about, if you wanna add this into the chat box, is I wanna know what people work on in the summer, like what kind of crochet projects you guys are up to in the summer, and if that changes at all during the year. I'm just curious if other people are seasonal crocheters or not. Um, so please say hi. Anyway, um, let's get started. We're gonna talk first about the materials that you need. So this is a very simple and um, inexpensive project. You'll just need a skein of a cotton worsted weight yarn. So this would be like a dishcloth cotton, um, the kind of, this is very readily available in big box stores, but if you want to see the particular kind of cotton yarn that I am using, that is listed in your pattern. And speaking of your pattern, you can download your free pattern and you can read along with me as I go through the tu tutorial, or you can just download it later. It'll be available later too, so you don't need to worry about getting it right, right now if you just want to watch. All right, so you'll need your pattern. You'll need some yarn, about 135 yards of yarn, and then you'll need two different hooks. Um, your hooks will depend on your gauge, and you can find your gauge information in your pattern, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. I used a G hook, um, a four millimeter hook for the bottom, so that's just the very bottom part, this part right here, the bottom of the sling, and then the rest, everything else, including the strap and everything, I used an F hook which is a 3.75 millimeter hook. Um, and I would recommend using a stitch marker for um, keeping, your, keeping track of your rounds when you're working at the bottom of the sling. And other than that, that's really all you need. So, all right, let's get started. And hello to Dawn from Washington State. You're working on everything, everything. <laughs> sometimes that feels like me sometimes, I just, um, do a little bit here and there, all over the place. All right, so to begin, we're gonna start with a magic loop or an adjustable ring, whatever you like to call it. I am using the larger of the two hooks. So in order to start with an adjustable ring, you'll just draw yourself a little loop, and then you take the loop, fold it over on top of the strand that's connected to the ball of yarn, and then put your hook underneath that strand in the middle there. Or if you have another way that you prefer to make an adjustable loop, you just go ahead and do that. Then you just chain one to kind of anchor it, and then you can begin working. So round one, we're gonna work six single crochets into our loop. So a single crochet right into the center there. We're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the first single crochet. We'll do that again. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. There's two. Now we're gonna do four more. One, two, three, and four. So now we have a total of six. I'm just gonna tighten that loop a little bit. And in the next round, we're gonna be working two single crochets into each stitch round. So Sometimes when you're first learning how to do this, you might get confused about exactly where your stitch is. Is it here or is it here? So what I like to do is I like to count backwards from my hook like this to count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that, that little V right there, that's where we're gonna put our hook. Okay, so we're gonna do two single crochets into each stitch around. So one, two, and then we're gonna use a stitch marker just to keep track of the beginning of our round. 
I'm putting it in the first of those two. And two more single crochets into each of the rest of the stitches per round. <clears throat> oh, Don complimented me on my yarn bowl. Thank you, Don. My friend Mary Lydia, she is a potter, and so she makes all kinds of cool mugs, and she made me this yarn bowl. And she actually, um, I, I don't know if she still does this, but she used to draw pictures of her own bunnies that she had. I believe this one's name was Bossy Pants, um, her bunny, <laughs> which was adorable. All right, so we've made it all the way around that, that uh, second round, which is two single crochets in each round. We should have 12 single crochets. Then on round three, we're going to do two single crochets into the next stitch and one single crochet into the following stitch. Okay, so two into that stitch. And one into the next stitch. Two into the next stitch. And one into the next stitch. So if you're new to reading patterns, um, I just want to let you know one quick little thing. Uh, if you take a look at this pattern here, whatever is inside of the brackets, those are a set of instructions. Let's see, let me point it. This is the one that we're working on right now, round three. Two single crochets into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. And that is inside brackets. So what that means is the instructions within those brackets is what you will do whatever comes after the bracket. So you, you will repeat this six times, okay? Just to help you get a little more accustomed to reading patterns. Because I know that can be a tricky thing for a lot of people. All right, we're still working two single crochets into one stitch and then one single crochet into the next stitch. Two and then one. Okay, so we're just gonna continue working around and around. You'll follow your directions here <coughs> for rounds four, five, and six. You're doing six increases per round and it's all spelled out in here um, in the pattern how many times, uh, you know, what, what you need to repeat and how many times you need to do it. So you'll follow all those directions and then you can check your gauge after round six, which basically means you just get out your ruler and measure the diameter of your circle and then you can compare it to the gauge section in my pattern. So number seven, I just wanna point out, this is another increase round, but we're only doing um, two increases. So you'll do eight single crochets. Then you do two single crochets in the next stitch then you do nine single crochets, and then you repeat that whole sequence one more time. So all of these previously had six increases, but this one only has two increases, okay? So that's to get our stitch count to be the correct amount for doing the pineapple stitch. So after you've worked through round seven, you'll do two rounds of just single crochet with no increases. You're just single crocheting around and around, and this is what your piece will look like. So it'll be pretty flat until you get to those last two rounds and then it's going to start to cup just a little bit. And that's the point where we switch to the other hook. We're going to use the smaller hook. And I think it's pretty safe to just go down one hook size um, once you get the correct gauge for the bottom of the, bottom of the pouch. Just go down one hook size um, to do the remainder of the project. Okay, so we've finished working around and around, and at the very end of round nine, where we just worked single crochets all the way around, you're going to just do a slip stitch into the next stitch. That's just to kind of even out this edge here. So you just insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through the loop on the hook, okay? And so that stitch where we just did our slip stitch is where we are going to begin working in the pineapple lace stitch pattern. So I'm gonna skip ahead in this pattern. Um, all of the directions for the pineapple lace, they are all written out as you can see here. And the abbreviations are listed in your pattern so you can look those up if you're not sure what those are. But I prefer to work from charts. Um, if you guys have watched my lives before, you know how I love my charts. It just really helps me see the bigger picture to see how all my stitches are interconnecting with each other. It's just, sometimes it's just hard for me to read through all of those abbreviations and all of those words. So <laughs> if this sounds like you, you're not alone, okay? Um, so I prefer to work from the charts and I'll be explaining this. If you're newer to charts, 
All a chart is, is basically like a picture representation of all of your stitches and where they go. How do they relate to each other? So this particular chart, um, you can see all the abbreviations are down here. This was our last round of single crochet that we already did. And we're going to begin working right here. So every time you start a new round in your chart, you're going to be starting with this little chain four, which counts as a double crochet and a chain one, okay? Um, that's what this little note down here is a slip stitch. Each round begins with a slip stitch and a beginning chain. So you'll do your slip stitch, which we already did, and then you're going to do your beginning chain, which is right there, okay? So th three chains, chain one, and then we are going to work across here, and you can see all these different little symbols. They stand for different stitches. So the little circles, that's a chain. The T with the little cross through it, that's a double crochet. Here's some more chains. The little plus signs are single crochets. And you can see, the thing that I love so much about charts is that you can see where you're skipping stitches and which stitches are being worked into. And just the relationship between all of the stitches is just is so helpful for me to see that. So once you work across here, you can see that just sort of ends, right? But that means your stitch pattern is going to just wrap around and end over here. So imagine if you cut this piece of paper out and taped it together into a tube, that would be actually what's happening here. I wanted to draw, basically draw a picture with the chart of the, something that's made in the round and that's kind of hard to do. Um, so what I did was I, this will end with these two chains and you can see the two chains repeated right here, but they're faint. All of these faint stitches are actually stitches you already did because they're from over here, but they're just to help you find your place again. So we'll, we'll go through that a little bit more as we work through the chart. All right, so we're starting on round one. We're gonna start with a chain four. One, two, three, four. So the first three chains are counting as a double crochet, and the fourth chain is counting as a chain one space, and then we're going to do two more double crochets into that same stitch. So we'll yarn over, and we're inserting our hook into that same place as we did our slip stitch join. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, one more double crochet. So we'll yarn over, insert. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Then we're gonna skip one, two, three single crochets. And then we're gonna do two single crochets down here. Oops, I forgot, we need to do a chain two first. We'll do the chain two, one, two. Then we're skipping those three single crochets, one, two, three, skipping those stitches. And then we're gonna do a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. One, oh, let me back up and tell you what a single crochet is. <laughs> well, we already did that. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, okay? And then you're gonna do another single crochet right next to it. All right, so we've worked through this part. Then we're gonna chain one, and we're gonna skip two stitches, and then do a double crochet into the next stitch. So chain one, skip two stitches, and do a double crochet into the following stitch. Then we are going to do four chains, one, two, three, four, and skip two single crochet. One, two, three, four, and then we're gonna skip two single crochets. One, two, and then we're gonna work another double crochet right here. And then we'll do a chain one, skip two single crochets, and then work two single crochets. All right, so we did our chain one, skip two, dump, uh, skip two single crochets, and then we're going to do two more single crochets. One, two. All right, I see Dawn says, the pineapple design was the first crochet I was taught by my great aunt with thread years ago. Whoa, Dawn, way to start out with a challenging project. <laughs> I'm impressed. Okay, so we're going to chain two stitches. This is where we are here in our chart. Chain two, skip three single crochets, and then we're gonna work all of this into the next single crochet, okay? So we chain two, one, two, skip three, one, two, three. Then we're gonna work a series of two double crochets, one, two, 
and then a chain one, and then two more double crochets. One, two. All into that same single crochet stitch. Then we'll chain two. We're right here, and we're gonna skip three single crochets. One, two, three. And then work two, two single crochets. So skip one, two, three. Work two single crochets. Chain one. Skip two single crochets. And then we're going to do this double crochet. Chain four. Skip two. So here's our double crochet. Chain one, two, three, four. And then we'll skip two stitches. And then we're going to work another double crochet. One, two. <coughs> so we're right here. We're going to chain one, skip two, and then two single crochets. So chain one, skip two, one, two. And then a single crochet here and a single crochet here. Then we're going to chain two, one, two. There's our last two chains. And then you can see we've wrapped around to this side and we are going to finish up our round with this double crochet here, okay? Because like I said before, these two very faint uh, chain stitches, these are just here as like a placeholder to tell you, to, to help you orient yourself from doing these two. Those count as, these are the exact same two. And then we're just gonna do a double crochet into that same stitch at the beginning. So we've done our two chains and then we're going to work a double crochet right here. One, two. Okay, and you can see, I should have mentioned, we're skipping those three stitches at that very end of the round. One, two, three stitches. And then you work your double crochet into that same space that we first worked into. And now we're going to do, this little dot here is just a slip stitch. So we're slip stitching into the third chain. One, two, three. So we can count up one, two, three. And when you slip stitch into this chain, you can go under the V like how you normally would, but I usually just put it in between. I just put it right down in the center because that is always facing me. It twists the chain so it faces you. So I just have one strand on the bottom and then two strands on the top and I just call it good. I think it looks just fine to do it that way. It's a little less effort. All right, so we've done round one. Now we're going to start with round two. And we're going to chain four. This is the same beginning. You can see here, we are gonna start with the same beginning all the way up, okay? So we're gonna start by doing a slip stitch into that, into that um, chain one space. So just insert through, pull up a loop and pull through. That kind of anchors it to the middle of your chain one space. Then we're gonna do four chains. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do two double crochets into that same chain space. One, two, and then we're gonna chain two, chain two. Here's, here's where we are, chaining two, single crochet into that first chain space, and then we're gonna skip over to the two single crochets, skip over the chain one space, and we're gonna work a total of seven trebles in this chain four space here, okay? So we've chained two, we're working a single crochet, and then we're gonna work seven trebles all the way over here in this bigger loop, okay? Because we're skipping the two single crochets, skipping the chain one space, and we're gonna work seven trebles in here. So we've yarned over twice, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, we'll do that again. Yarn over twice, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, we're gonna repeat that five more times. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then we're gonna skip this chain one space. We're skipping two single crochets right here. And then we're gonna work a single crochet into this chain two space. Single crochet, and then we chain two. And then we're gonna work this series of two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, all into that chain one space. So here's a double crochet, and a second double crochet. A chain one, 
And then two more double crochets. One, two. All right, we've chained two, and then we're gonna do a single crochet into the chain two space right here. There's our single crochet. And now we're going to repeat this section where we do seven trebles. Okay, so we're skipping over the two single crochets, skipping over the chain one space. We're working into this chain four space with seven trebles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, then we're gonna skip this chain one space. We're skipping the two single crochets and then we are going to be working, let's see, a single crochet into this chain two space right here. Okay, so we'll work a single crochet and then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and now we find our way, so here we made it to the end of round two. Those are the two faded little chains right there, and then we're gonna do a double crochet into that same space where we first started. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's our double crochet, and then we are gonna join with a slip stitch to the third chain, one, two, three. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through, okay? So now we made it to round three, and this is very similar to round two, except that there's chain one spaces between those trebles, and there's no chain one single crochet here, okay? So this should look fairly familiar. So first we slip stitch in that chain one space to anchor our stitch to the middle, and then we chain four, one, two, three, four, And then we are going to do two more double crochets. One, two. And now we're going to do a treble into, you can see right here, there's gonna be a treble into each treble. And in between those trebles, we're gonna do a chain one. Okay, so we'll yarn over twice. Here's the treble over here. So we're skipping past all of this stuff and we're going working right into that treble from the last round. So one, two, three, and then a chain one. And we'll do that again. Yarn over twice. One, two, three, chain one. So we'll work one treble into each treble across, remembering to put a chain one stitch between each of these trebles. And then when we get to the very last treble, you don't need to put, you should not put a chain one at the end of that. So, oops, that was a double crochet. Let me try that again. Okay, so here's the last treble. So we're gonna make a treble into that stitch, one, two, three, and then no more chain ones, okay? Because it's just a treble. And then we're gonna move over to the middle of this chain one section in between the double crochets, and we're gonna make two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Okay, so here's the middle, right there, that chain one section. We're working two double crochets, one, two, chain one, one and two. All right, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna repeat all that. We're gonna do trebles in each treble, remembering to put those chain ones between your trebles. So there's a treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one, Treble, chain one. Treble, chain one. Two, three. Four, 
And we'll do a quick check, make sure we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. And then we are going to complete this section over here. So we've worked all the way across here. That's faded treble is the one we already did. And now we're going to do this double crochet and then we're gonna to join to the top of the chain three. So double crochet. And then we're gonna to join to the top of the chain three, which is right here with a slip stitch. Okay, so look, we've already worked three rounds. So now we're gonna start working rounds. Rounds four through eight are very similar to each other. They do these little single crochet, and then you do a couple of chains to hop over to the next single crochet. Okay, and then each row that you work, so you can see here, there's one chain, then there's two chains, then there's three chains, then there's four chains, then there's five chains. Okay, so those are the differences between those rounds. Now we're gonna work uh, the beginning of, of round four. So we start with a slip stitch and chain four. Two more double crochets, one, two. And then we're gonna chain one. There's our chain. And now when you take a look at this, you're putting a single crochet into your chain space that's between your trebles. So just to orient yourself, there's a treble, there's the first two trebles, this little chain space here, that's where you're gonna be putting your single crochet. So we'll single crochet in there, and then chain two, and hop across to the next chain one space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. And then you're gonna chain one, because we're right here, chain one, and then you're gonna do two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, into that chain one space. One, two, chain one, one, two. Then we're gonna repeat what we just did. So we'll chain one, find the first two trebles and put a single crochet between them in that chain one space. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two. So I don't know if you guys are super familiar with um, pineapple stitches, but there can be lots of different versions of pineapple stitch. This isn't the only version that you can do. Sometimes um, there's pineapple stitches in between, staggering in between, like you'll have a pineapple stitch here and one here, and then you'll have one up here, kind of in the middle. So just, you know, this is a great jumping off point, and I think that this pattern is pretty straightforward for pineapple lace. Um, that's why I started with this type of pattern. But just know that if you're working in other pineapple lace stitch patterns, that it might, you know, there's going to be some variations from the one that I'm showing you today. All right, so we've worked across um, this first round of these little hopping stitches with a single crochet chain two. We've come across, we've worked our double crochet, and then we're just gonna join to the top of the chain three. This is the same on every single round, so that should look familiar. And then we'll do a slip stitch and start with four chains, one, two, three, four, and we're working on round five. Round five is exactly the same as round four, except there's an extra chain here, and then you hop one less, okay? Because it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it comes to the top. All right, so two double crochets. One, two, one, two chains, and then we're gonna single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two. When I'm doing my single crochets, I'm just putting them in that chain one space, all the way across. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then we'll do the two chains right here, followed by the 
double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, double crochet. <laughs> There's our chain one and our two double crochets. There we go. Now we're going to repeat that same thing. So we're going to be working in between these two single crochets. There's a chain one space right there. That's where we insert our hook. Single crochet. Oops, I forgot to do my two chains. I got to do two chains right here. One, two. Then we do a single crochet, chain two. 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 And then we're, we're going to end with a double crochet at the beginning and a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. And then we slip stitch into that chain one space. And now we're working on round six. <coughs> so begin, begin with the chain four, just like usual, and two double crochets, one, two, one, two, three chains this time. We're doing three and then three little hops. Okay, so four single crochets with three sets of chain twos between them. Okay, so just look for your first two single crochets and then find that chain one space between them. And that's where we're going to be working. Our first single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two. Single crochet, chain two. And a single crochet. And then we do three single or three chains. One, two, three. And then we work the same combination of double crochets in the chain one space. And then three chains, which I already did, and then we'll do a single crochet. Chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Then we do chain three, one, two, three. We're right here at the end, and that wraps around. There's the three faded single or chain stitches. Then we're going to do a double crochet and slip stitch to join. So there's our double crochet, and we count up one, two, three slip stitch. Then we'll do a slip stitch in here and chain four. One, two, three, four. We're working on round seven now. This begins just like all the other rounds with those two double crochets. Now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we work between those two single crochets into the chain one space. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to work our two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, one, two, chain one, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, four chains. Now we're working the other side here. We're repeating what we did. So we're going to start here in between those two single crochets and do a single crochet. Chain two, one, two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then chain four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to finish up with that extra double crochet up here where we started and a slip stitch in the third chain. Okay, so look, you can see our pineapple is starting to form here. It's actually <laughs> almost completed. So we're going to be working on round eight. So we'll slip stitch in the middle of that chain one space, and then we're going to do four chains, one, two, three, four, and then two double crochets, one, two. And then we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, 
And then we're gonna work in between the first two single crochets in that chain one space. We'll work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Now we're gonna chain five more. One, two, three, four, five. Right here, right there. And then we're gonna do the double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, right here. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, double crochet. Then we'll do five chains, one, two, three, four, five. And we're, we're gonna repeat what we just did. So in between those two single crochets and the chain one space, that's where we put our single crochet, chain two, and the single crochet. Then we chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna finish with that double crochet where we started and a slip stitch. All right, so now we're on row, round nine here. This one's a little bit different. You can see that there's some treble crochets here, but it's very similar to what we've been doing. So we'll slip stitch into the chain one space, begin the same way, one, two, three, four chains, and then two double crochets. Then we're going to chain three stitches, and then we're going to, in the very top, that chain two, we're gonna do a treble crochet and then five chains and a treble crochet all into that chain two space. Okay, so we'll do one, two, three chains, and then we're gonna do a treble right here. So you can see in between those two single crochets at the top of our pineapple, we're gonna do a treble crochet, one, two, three, and then five chains, one, two, three, four, five, and then another treble. One, two, three. So you can see we've got two trebles going into that two, uh, chain two space with the chain five in between. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we'll work our two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Okay, so we did our chain three, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Then we'll chain three, one, two, three. So right now we're right here, so we've chained three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna do a treble, five chains and a treble all into that chain two space, just like we did before. So yarn over twice, and then in between your two single crochets, there's a chain one space. Um, hi, to Marlene. I see your note about um, having a little trouble keeping up because you're new to crochet. Well, good for you for watching. And just so you know, too, you can always go back and watch this again and again to get, you know, to, I am going through this a little bit quickly because some of it's kind of repetitive. Um, but you can certainly go back and watch parts over and over if you are having trouble understanding, you know, uh, what to do in your next stitch. <laughs> and I'm glad the chart is helpful. The charts, man, they, they make so much of a difference to me when I am doing my crochet, especially lace, because it reading all those words, it's, uh, it's just hard to imagine where your stitches are supposed to go, but this is just a picture showing where they go, and it's just extremely helpful. So I'm glad that you like it too. And Mariana, um, you're happy with this interesting project. Thank you, and thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. All right, so we've chained five. We're right here, so we did our treble, and then chain five, and then another treble into that chain two space. So yarn over twice, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. That's your treble. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And so this three wraps around to here. You can 
see the faded three chains, and then we're going to do a double crochet and then slip stitch to the top of our chain three. So we'll double crochet into that same space where we first began, and then we're going to do our slip stitch right there. Okay, so we have completed the pineapple lace section of our water bottle. See how quickly that came together with worsted weight yarn and only two repeats? It's pretty speedy. All right, so then you can see on our chart, there's a bunch of plus symbols. Those are the single crochets, and this is showing you where to place them. So we're just about to start on this section here, this little solid stitch um, kind of edging at the top of the water bottle. Uh, water bottle cozy, I should say. All right, so after we did our slip stitch, we're just gonna start by making a single crochet into that chain one space, okay? We don't need to do a slip stitch this time. We slip stitched here at the top of the chain three, and now, before we had been slip stitching in the chain one space, but we don't need to do that. We're just gonna go ahead and place a single crochet right there. That's the single crochet where the arrow is pointing to. And then we're going to do a single crochet into the top of each of the next two stitches. Single crochet, single crochet, into each of those two double crochet stitches. Then we have th three, oops, I gotta move this down so you can, guys can see what I'm doing. Um, three single crochets into this chain three space. Here, I'll move it over here. That might be better. We'll try that. All right, so we're gonna do three single crochets into this chain three space. One, two, three. Then we are skipping over the treble. You don't have to work into that at all. And you do six single crochets into the next chain loop, okay? So that's that chain five space there. So you're gonna do six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, LL has a very good question. What in the diagram tells you to go into the space and not the stitch? Well, it isn't exactly in the diagram. Um, it's in the words written out and it's also just from me showing you where to go. If you were to go into the stitches here, you would have a little trouble because there's five chains here and there's six stitches that need to go into that chain space. So what, you know, if you wanted to stitch into all of your chains, you could do that, but one of them, maybe the middle one, would have to have two single crochets into that center chain. You know, as far as how it looks, it would look just a tiny bit different. You can see here those pieces of yarn that are wrapping around that's because we're stitching into this chain space. We're not actually stitching into those stitches themselves. We're just stitching into the chain space. So basically, you just have to um, follow along with the words, or it, it would get too complicated if I showed like an arrow going into the chain space. I was just trying to keep it really simple. Um, but basically, I'm, it's just me telling you <laughs> to put it into the chain space here in the video and also in the written directions. That's why actually a lot of times if I'm working for somebody else's pattern, I will look at the chart and I will look at the words and read through the words as I'm looking at the chart just to make sure that I fully understand um, what the chart is telling me. So, all right, so, but basically in this section, the chain one spaces, um, Anytime that there is a chain, we're not actually working into each chain. We are working into the chain space, if that helps, for this, this whole round. So just know that. And then we're skipping over some of the stitches. So we're not working into these treble stitches here or here. All right, so we've gotten to one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me count and see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we did these six. And then we're going to do three single crochets into the next chain three space. One two, three. Oh, and I see Gwen had the same question. Yes, there really isn't anything on the chart that tells you that you're working into the space instead of into the actual stitch. Okay, and then we're going to work single crochets into each of these double crochets. And then when we get to the chain one space, we're working a single crochet into that chain one space. So work a single crochet into that double, another single crochet, 
And then here's a chain one space. We're gonna do a single crochet there, and then a single crochet into each of the next two double crochets. Then we get to another chain three space right here, and we're gonna work three single crochets into that chain three space. One, two, three. And then we're skipping over the treble, we're not working into that, but we're gonna work six single crochets into this chain space. One, two, three, whoops, four, five, six. Okay, and then we're skipping over that treble and we're gonna do three single crochets into this chain three space. One, two, three. Okay, and so we've worked these three. Those three are right here, but they're very faded. And then we're gonna work one more single crochet into this double crochet, which is right here. And then we're gonna work another single crochet into the top of that chain three, which is right between my thumbs right here. So we do another single crochet right there. And that completes our round. So then on the following round, we're just going to work single crochet into each stitch around as they come up. So you'll make a single crochet. You don't have to do a join or anything like that. You're just gonna keep going, putting one single crochet into each stitch around, just like this. And so this is rounds two, three, and four. So for the next three rounds, you're just doing single crochet into each single crochet stitch around and around and around. And then your piece will look like this. See, this is just exactly the same thing except for I've added a couple more rounds here. And then you will just fasten off. That's where you will end uh, along one of the sides and you'll just fasten off. So then to make the strap, you're just gonna start, let's see, we'll start with this. <clears throat> to make the strap, the strap is a separate piece that just gets stitched on to your project. So this is just worked back and forth in turned rows and you're using the same small hook. So we're gonna make a slip knot, put that on our hook and then we're gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I like to turn my work over, turn my chain over and work into the bottom bump, but you can work into whatever part of the chain you want to. It, it doesn't really make a difference. We're gonna be sewing this to the sides of the pouch, so it's not really gonna show. So um, you're just gonna work a single crochet into each of these five chains. Okay, so we're skipping the last chain we made, that just counts as a turning chain, and in the strap, this, the turning chains do not count as a stitch. So we will insert our hook under the second uh, back bump, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. There's our first single crochet. We're gonna do four more. One, two, three, four. So we've got five single crochet stitches. Then we're gonna chain one and turn. And then we're gonna work a single crochet stitch into each stitch across. Okay, so like I said before, our, chain, our turning chains don't count as a stitch, so we don't work into them. So this will be our first stitch right here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we'll chain one and turn and work across again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you're just gonna continue making chains on the, for your turning chain, just one chain, and then working five single crochets across, back and forth and back and forth in turn rows until your piece looks like this one. Okay, and there, actually, I wanna say too, there is a note in your pattern explaining about, about the length of your strap. So, <laughs> 
this, as you can imagine, actually, you don't have to imagine because I can just show you. So on this water bottle, this, this water bottle is full of water. So this is heavy, right? So see how much the strap will stretch? You can see it kind of stretched when I picked it up. That is normal. That's going to happen. Um, so when you're making this strap, you need, and you're trying it on yourself to make sure that it's the right length that you want it to be, you want to do that with a water bottle in your pouch. You can pin the pouch to your strap and make sure that you have a full water bottle too, because that's going to stretch it out a lot more than if you put an empty water bottle in there. I learned that the hard way, so you don't have to. Okay, so um, you're just going to continue working back and forth and back and forth. Um, my water bottle was about 39, or my water bottle strap is about 39 inches long, uh, but you can adjust that accordingly to you know whatever size you want it to be to fit well. And actually, I have a little tip. I'm making two of these for my little kids, and I thought, oh, I'll just make the strap shorter. But then I thought, oh, I don't really want to remake this later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the strap to the regular length. And then after I finish it and sew it on, I am just going to double over part of the strap like this and then whip stitch the edges in a contrasting yarn because it doesn't really bother me to see that. And then later I'll be able to see what yarns to cut and then I can extend it to the length, to the full length when they get a little bit bigger. So assuming it lasts that long, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna have your 39 inches or however many, however long you want this to be. And what I ended up doing was I did an edging on both sides. At first I thought, okay, that'll keep it from stretching out too much, but it didn't really seem to make that much of a difference, really. But I did like how it looked a little bit more polished. Here, I'll show you. This one has the edging on it. This one does not. So the edge is a little bit bumpy. There's nothing wrong with that. If you like how this one looks, that is totally fine. You can leave the strap as it is. Um, but the, it does get a little bit wider, which I thought was a little bit more comfortable because of the weight of the water in there, and I did like how this looked. So just know that the stitching along the edges, it's optional. If you just don't really care about that, you can certainly skip that step. So, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. And the directions, um, it's all written out in the directions to just turn and single crochet along the length, along the turn rows here. But Sometimes it's hard for, you know, if you've never done this, it's hard to imagine, like, where am I supposed to put my stitches? I don't understand that. So I'm going to show you. I look for places with my hook that are a little bit tighter. I don't want to put my hook into places like right here. There's a hole right here. If I put my hook in there, it's going to make that hole even bigger. You'd think it would fill it in, but it doesn't. So we're going to start by just doing a single crochet stitch right here to that tighter place. Single crochet. And then instead of putting my hook inside that hole, I will sort of split these in half. So that way, at least I'm not making the hole any bigger and that thread on the bottom can kind of help fill that in a little bit. And I found for the way that I stitch that I needed about, I need to stitch into each of the next three row ends and then I skip a row end. So, what that looks like is, for example, if I put a stitch in here, and then a stitch in here, and a stitch in here, then I would skip this row end and put a stitch in here, and here, and here. Skip that row end. It may be different for you, um, just depending on how you're stitching and how big, is, how big your stitches are. Just know that if the edge of your strap starts waving back and forth like this. That means you're putting too many stitches in there. Or if you want to do that same amount of stitches, maybe you're working into every row end or something like that, you can use a smaller hook so that it makes your stitches smaller and it doesn't ripple like that. You just don't want it to ripple. You also don't want it to start puckering and pulling in on your work um, because by then maybe your strap will be too short and that would be sad. So if that's happening, use a bigger hook or put more stitches in. Um, just, you know, you, this is something you can definitely just eyeball as you're single crocheting along this edge and just keep, keep track of what it's doing. Just every once in a while look at it and see if it's rippling or if it's pulling in. Um, and then you'll know how you're doing. You can adjust accordingly. So you can, you can use a different hook size or you can do a different amount of stitches. Okay, so 
you'll just work single crochet stitches along that edge and then fasten off and then work single crochet stitches all the way along the opposite edge and fasten off. And when you fasten off, you can leave yourself long enough yarn tails so that you can sew your strap onto the sides of your bag. And I'll show you how to do that. So here we have the edging all done. And here is the bag part. And you can sew this on wherever you like. Maybe you want it to be right here in the front above the pineapple, the point of the pineapple. I chose to put it, it just seemed to me, it just looked nice to have it directly above these little um, double crochet, chain one space, double crochet sections. So that's where I chose to put mine. But you know, you can sew it on however you like. And I will pin it in place so that the center, I'm just looking at the visual center of where this is, is about in the center of my strap. And you can pin like you're kind of sewing, going in and out, in and out, just to hold it in the right place. I'm gonna turn it this way. And this part, you need to sew this very sturdy because you know that water is gonna make it heavy and you don't want it to rip or come apart. And you don't want to have to go back in and fix this later, right? So you can just take little whip stitches like this. You're just sliding your, um, your needle underneath each, each stitch at least needs to get a, a whip stitch placed into it. So I'm going to remove that pin. So I just sort of abutted the edges just sort of snuggled them up next to each other like that. And now I'm just doing a whip stitch. And you know, you can, I probably should have woven this end in first so that it's not in our way here. But you can do all your weaving in at the end too. All right, so once you've reached the end, do another stitch or so. I'm doing a couple stitches, and then now I'm going to work back across the opposite direction, making more whip stitches, making sure that you go through both, uh, both edges. And I would say, you know, stitch this at least twice. It's just a very short seam and it doesn't take that much time. And it's best to just <laughs> do it twice now and then you don't have to repair it later, right? Okay, so you'll sew that end on, make sure it is not twisted. And then you can sew the other end on opposite so that it is right above that little section of the double crochets. And then you can weave in all your ends. So when you're weaving in your ends, you're gonna wanna try to go back and forth in a few different directions, at least a couple different directions. If you have a slightly sharper tip needle, you might be able to split through your yarn strands, which makes it the most secure if you can actually split through your yarn strands instead of going in between your yarn strands like I am. My needle's a little bit more blunt. But if you go in a couple different directions, one direction, turn around, go the other direction, then it'll make it a lot harder for this tail to ever work its way out. All right, if anybody has any more lingering questions, put them into the chat box now because I'd like to answer them before I wrap things up here. And or if you have any suggestions on future videos, future demos that you'd like me to do, put them in the chat box too because I Love to find out what you guys are interested in. I mean, I want to make things that you guys want to make. So we're all interested in crochet. All right, so I've woven that in a few different directions. And I can cut that off. <clears throat> and then you'll weave in all the rest of your ends. And in the, in the instructions, I do say to block this, but that's kind of like, a catch-all phrase that I like to put at the end of all my patterns. Um, not every time, but I'm just going to tell you I did not block this and I think it looks just fine. 
Um, you, but if your stitches are kind of uneven, if you are giving this as a gift and you want it to look like really pristine, or maybe you're going to sell these or something like that, then you will want to block it first, um, which means you can just get it wet and then let it dry in a nice shape. You could just pat it into shape. Or you can use um, your iron and put it at a high steam setting and don't actually touch your iron to your work, but just hold it above steam it and then just sort of pat it with your hands and that'll make everything look really nice and crisp. I mean this strap is just a little bit wavy. I think it looks fine um, and I'm going to give it give it as is, you know, give it to, as a gift as is. Um, but if, you know, if you, like I said before, if you're giving it to somebody or you're going to sell it, you could maybe run your iron up above it and steam it and it'll look really super perfect. But nobody's going to judge you if you don't do that part, <laughs> especially not me. All right, so, oh, we have a suggestion for, okay, we have a question about using twine or hemp yarn instead for this project, I'm assuming, yes. Um, yeah, you can just do a swatch first. I think that would be a really great substitution since it doesn't stretch. Part of the reason that I chose this yarn is because it's cotton, and you can see here, I'm, I'm not stretching it at all yet, but I'm going to pinch it tight, and then I'm going to try and stretch it. Okay, I'm trying to stretch it. And it really doesn't stretch very much. So you, you definitely want to find a yarn like a twine or a hemp or cotton or something like that um, to, to make this project out of. Otherwise, I think you're going to have a lot of, well, I mean, you can do a little experiment, I suppose, if you want to just try with your acrylic yarn. Um, but using a yarn that doesn't stretch very much is going to be a lot better because when you put that heavy water bottle in there, it does stretch a little bit, you know, with the lace pattern, but you, you're not going to want it to just stretch out uncontrollably, especially the strap, and that's going to be very frustrating <laughs> to have that banging around around your knees, right? Nobody wants that. Um, let's see, and LL is wondering if I could crochet a winter hat for a toddler with ear flaps. I think you may, I don't know if it was you, but I do remember somebody had asked me for this before, and it is definitely on my list. I have a little list of all the things that I'm planning to do over the next few months, so um, I'm not sure if it was you, but if it wasn't, then this is a popular topic. Um, yes, I do have that. I am planning on making a, an ear flap hat, not just for toddlers, but for a bunch of different sizes. So that'll be coming up in the future, um, probably in a couple of months when the weather is a little bit less summery. Then I'll start on that. All right, and Corrine is asking, crochet crop top, my daughter really wants me to make one. Ooh, I, I haven't actually, I have made one. But it was just for me. I didn't write up the pattern or anything. That would be super fun. That's a really good idea. I did have some ideas for some, some tops that had granny squares up at the top. Um, so maybe I could combine that or I'll, I'll think on that one. But thank you for the suggestion, Corrine. That's a really, that's a really fun one. I do, I do love making garments too. Sometimes it's a little challenging to do this in a one hour episode, but maybe I'll, I'll find a way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys, so much for joining me. And thank you so much for your suggestions and your questions. And I will be back in about two weeks, a little less than two weeks. And I'm going to be showing you guys a demonstration on how to make the cutest hamsters ever. So I really hope that you guys come back for that Amigurumi project. And until then, happy crocheting, everybody.